Hello my precious friends, I really hope that you are doing great. Welcome to our today's class. It is our third lesson on the third topic of Form 4 which is called Floating and Sinking. As usual, let me commence by giving the quote of the day which states that your journey would become much easier if you don't carry your past with you. We shall discuss that quote at the end of our class today. So today we are looking at the law of flotation. So it is important to remember that the law of flotation is simply a special case of the Ahmed's principle. So from floating and sinking lesson one, we did state the Ahmed's principle whereby we said that it states that uh, when a body is partially or totally immersed in a fluid, it experiences an upthrust equal to the weight of the fluid displaced. So law of flotation is just a special case of that particular Ahmed's principle. So the law of flotation states that a floating object displaces its own weight of the fluid in which it floats. So that whenever you have an object floating on a fluid, then the weight of that particular object will always be equal to the weight of the fluid that will be displaced in order for that particular uh, body or object to float on that particular fluid. For example, consider our dry wooden block which is floating on water. So according to the law of flotation, the weight of this particular wooden block must be equal to the weight of the water that that particular wooden block will displace when it is floating on water. So mathematically we are saying that the weight of a floating body would always be equal to the weight of the fluid that that particular body displaces. So in short, the weight of this particular uh, wooden block will be equal to the weight of the water that it will displace in order for it to float uh, comfortably. Then from the Ahmed's principle, we, we were able to establish and to verify that the weight of the fluid displaced will always be equal to the upthrust. So in short, we are saying that the weight of a floating body will always be equal to the upthrust. So this statement will be very, very key when we'll be looking at calculations involving a uh, floating and sinking. So always remember that uh, the weight of a floating body will be equal to the weight of the fluid that that particular body displaces. It will always also be equal to the upthrust uh, exerted on that particular body by the fluid. Then for a floating body, the net force acting on it will always be equal to zero. For example, in this case, you can see we have our weight which is acting downward. Remember the weight depends on gravity and gravity will always pull objects towards the center of the earth. Then the upthrust, which is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced, will always act upward. Remember we defined upthrust in uh, Form 1 when we were looking at the types of forces. We said that upthrust is simply an upward force uh, exerted on a body that is immersed on a fluid. So that simply means upthrust force will always act in the upward direction. And remember, force is uh, a vector quantity. We also defined a vector quantity is a quantity that has both magnitude and direction or a quantity that has both size and direction. So whenever we are looking at a force which is a vector quantity, we must consider the direction in which that particular quantity is acting. And we are saying that for this particular case, the upthrust is acting up and the weight is acting downward. Therefore, they are acting in the reversed direction. So um, when a body is floating on a fluid, it simply means that the forces acting on it are at balance. That is, the upward and the downward forces are at balance. Therefore, the total upward force must be equal to the total downward force. Of course, the upward force is the upthrust because upthrust will always act upward, which is equal to the weight of the fluid that the body displaces. Then must be equal to the total downward force. Of course, the downward force is the weight of this particular uh, body. Therefore, if we want to find the net force or the resultant force or the total force acting on a floating body, we'll simply take the sum of the upward and the downward forces. So you'll simply take the weight, which is active, which is the downward force, then you add the upward force, which is the upthrust. We have said that we are taking upthrust as a negative because of its direction. So if we take the direction in which the weight is acting to be positive, then the direction that is the upward direction in which the upthrust is acting will be negative. So if the weight of, suppose the weight of this particular body is 20 Newton, then that particular weight of the body, which is 20 Newton, it must be equal to the weight of the water that it will displace. 
And we are saying that the weight of the fluid displaced must be equal to up thrust, courtesy of the Ahmed's principle. Therefore, if the weight of the body is 20 newton, then the up thrust will be also 20 newton. But because up thrust is acting upward, that is why I'm indicating with it with a negative because uh, up thrust is a force and a force is a vector quantity. Therefore, we must consider the direction. So if you take 20 newton plus minus 20 newton, you'll obtain zero newton. That is why you are saying that the net force or the resultant force acting on a floating body will always be equal to zero. So you can see it is zero newton. So for a body to float on a fluid, there must be a balance between the upward and the downward forces. Then uh, let's look at the conditions that must be satisfied for a body to float. So for a body to float on a fluid, it must satisfy the following two conditions. So the first condition is that it must be less denser than the fluid. That for a body to float on a given fluid, then that particular body, the density of that particular body must be less than the density of the fluid on which it is floating. For example, uh, suppose maybe the density of this particular wooden block maybe is 20 uh, newton per, that is 20 kilogram per cubic meter, then the density of water is a thousand uh, kilogram per cubic meter. So you can see that the density of water is greater than the density of the dry wooden blocks. And therefore, the density of the dry wooden block is less as compared to the density of the fluid that it is uh, displacing. So you can be told to state two conditions that must be satisfied for a body to float. So the first condition is that that particular body must, that is, it must be less denser than the fluid, that the floating body must have a density which is lower than the density of the fluid in which it is floating in. Uh, then, but of course, we shall look at some special cases. Then the second condition is that it must displace its own weight of the fluid that the weight of this particular floating body must be equal to the weight of the fluid that that particular body will displace. Or in short, we are saying that the weight of the floating body must be equal to the weight of the fluid displaced, of course, which is equal to the up thrust. Next. Our first example reads that a meteorological balloon has a volume of 36 cubic meter and is filled with helium of density 0 0.18 kilogram per cubic meter. So if the weight of the fabric is 120 newton, remember the fabric is just the material that is making up this particular balloon is 120 newton, calculate the maximum load which the balloon can lift. So we are told to take the density of air is 1.3 kilogram per cubic meter. So remember the maximum load which the balloon can lift will just be the difference between the upward force and the downward forces. Then it is also important to identify the fluid being displaced. In this case, the fluid being displaced is air. So this particular balloon, of course, it is floating in air. Therefore, uh, the weight of the air displaced will be equal to the up thrust. We say that a fluid can either be a liquid or a gas. So the total upward force will be equal to the up thrust, which is equal to the weight of the air displaced because this particular balloon is actually floating in air, as you can see in this particular diagram. So the total upward force is equal to weight of the air displaced. Then we say that weight is mass times gravity, but of course mass can be given by density times volume. Therefore, the weight of the air displaced will be equal to the up thrust, which is equal to the density in of the air displaced times volume of the air displaced, then multiplied by gravity. So the density of the air displaced, we are given the density of air is 1.3 kilogram per cubic meter. Then the volume of the air displaced. Remember, uh, the volume of the air displaced will just be equal to the volume of this particular balloon. Because remember, volume is just the amount of space occupied by a body. So the amount of space occupied by this particular balloon will simply be equal to the amount of air or the space that has been left by air, which has been displaced in order for this particular balloon to occupy this space. So the volume of the balloon will always be equal to the volume of the air that it will displace. Therefore, volume of the air displaced is 36 cubic meter, which is just equal to the volume of the balloon. Then of course times gravity, which is always 10 newton per kilogram. So if you take 1.3 times 36 times 10, you'll obtain 468 Newton as our total upward force or the up thrust. From there, we'll find the total downward forces. So of course, the downward force is simply the weight of the material or the weight of the helium that is constrained within this particular balloon fabric plus the weight of the balloon 
fabric. So that will be the total downward forces. Remember the weight always acts downward. Therefore, the total downward force will be the weight of the fabric or the material that is making the balloon plus the weight of the helium that is constrained or restricted within this particular balloon. Therefore, total downward force will be the weight of the fabric plus the weight of the helium. The weight of the fabric uh, we are given as 120 newton, that is the material that is making up the balloon, plus the weight of the helium will just be equal to mass times gravity, but we know that mass can be density times volume. Therefore, weight of the helium will just be uh, rho Vg, that is density of helium times volume of helium multiplied by gravity. So density of helium we are given as 0 0.18 kilogram per cubic meter. So density is 1.8, uh, 0 0.18 kilogram per cubic meter. Volume of the helium will just be equal to the volume of the balloon. Because remember, the helium filled up this particular balloon. Therefore, the volume of the balloon will just be equal to the volume of the fabric. That is, that is the volume of the balloon will just be equal to the volume of the helium. Because remember, it is the helium that is giving this particular balloon uh, this particular uh, circular shape. Therefore, and we are taking the volume of the fabric uh, to be negligible. That is, we are ignoring the volume or the amount of space occupied by the fabric of the balloon. So if that holds, then the volume of the helium will just be equal to the volume of the balloon. Because it is the helium that has been filled in the balloon in order to give it this particular circular shape. Therefore, volume of helium is equal to volume of the balloon, which is 36 cubic meter, then times gravity, which is usually 10 newton per kilogram. So weight of the fabric, which is 120 newton, will be equal to the weight of the helium will be 0 0.18 times 36 times 10, which gives you 64.8 newton. So if you take 120 newton plus 64.8 newton, you'll simply obtain 184.8 uh, newton. So this is the total downward force. So because the total downward force, which is 184.8 newton, is less than the total upward force, it simply means that in this particular case, the balloon was moving upward or the balloon was floating in air because the upward forces are greater than the downward forces. So for a floating body, the total upward force must be equal to the total downward forces. So the difference between the total upward force and the total downward force, that is the maximum load which the balloon can lift. Therefore, the maximum load that the balloon can lift will be the difference between the total upward force and the total downward force. So of course, upward force was 468 Newton, then the downward force was 184.8 Newton. So the difference will just be equal to the maximum weight which the balloon can lift. So if you take 468 minus 184.8 Newton, you'll obtain 283.2 Newton. So that is the maximum load which the balloon can lift. So the most important thing here is simply to find the total upward force and the total downward force, then you find the difference between the two will be the maximum load that the balloon can lift. Next, we look at our second example, which reads that a balloon of volume 6 cubic meter is filled with hydrogen of density 0 0.09 kilogram per cubic meter and floats in air of density 1.3 kilogram per cubic meter. So calculate the weight of the fabric of the balloon. So remember the fabric is simply the material, these outer materials that are making up this particular balloon. So again, uh, the formula is simply the same. You find the difference between the total upward force and the total downward force. So, and we said that the net force acting on a floating body is zero. So the total upward force must be equal to the total downward force. So let's start by finding the total upward forces. So of course, the upward force is only up thrust, uh, that is, which is also equal to the weight of the air that will be displaced because the fluid being displaced in this case is air because our balloon is actually floating in air as you can see. So total upward force is equals up thrust which is equals to weight of the air displaced. Then we know that weight can be given by rho Vg so density of the air displaced times volume of the air displaced times gravity. So density of the air displaced we are given the density of air is 1.3 kilogram per cubic meter. The volume of the air displaced will just be equal to the volume of the balloon because it is this particular balloon that is actually displacing the air. Therefore, its volume, the volume of this particular balloon will be equal to the volume of the air that will be displaced in order for the balloon to occupy that particular space in air. Therefore, volume of air displaced is equal to volume of the balloon, which is just 6 cubic meter. Then, of course, times gravity, which is usually 10 newton per 
kilograms. So if you take 1.3 by 6 times 10, you'll obtain 78 Newton as your total upward force, which is equal to the up thrust. Then the total downward force will be given by the weight of this particular hydrogen that is um, filled in this particular balloon, then plus the weight of the fabric or the material that is making this particular balloon. Remember, in some questions, you'll be told that to take the weight of the, bal of the balloon fabric to be negligible. If you are told to take the weight of the balloon fabric to be negligible, then the total downward force will just be the weight of the hydrogen alone. So you neglect the weight of the fabric. But in this case, we are not told uh, to that the weight of the fabric is negligible. Therefore, we just include it in our calculation. So total downward force will just be the weight of the hydrogen plus the weight of the fabric. So weight of the fabric plus weight of the hydrogen, which is equal to W fabric plus the weight of hydrogen will be given by rho Vg, density of hydrogen times volume of hydrogen times gravity. So density of hydrogen we are given as 0 0.09 kilogram per cubic meter. Volume of hydrogen will just be equal to the volume of the balloon because it is the hydrogen that has been filled in this particular balloon in order to give it this particular circular shape. Then of course you are taking the uh, volume of the fabric to be negligible. So density of the hydrogen is 0 0.09 kilogram per cubic meter. Volume of hydrogen is 6 cubic meter, which is equal to the volume of the balloon, times gravity is 10 newton per kilogram. So of course, if you take 0 0.09 times 6 times 10, you'll obtain 5.4 newton. Then we know that for a floating body, the net force acting on it is zero. That is simply to mean that the total upward force must be equal to the total downward forces. So the upward force was simply 78 newton, must be equal to total downward force, of course, is the weight of the fabric, plus the weight of the hydrogen, which we have found as W fabric plus 5.4, or the weight of the hydrogen. So I want to make weight of the fabric subject of the formula, so I'll simply take 5.4 Newton towards the left-hand side, so that when it crosses the equal sign, it becomes a negative. So 78 Newton minus 5.4 Newton will be equal to the weight of the fabric. So uh, the weight of the fabric will simply be equal to uh, the difference between 78 Newton and, of course, 5.4 Newton will just be 72.6 Newton. Then lastly, I have an exercise that I recommend you should try at your own free time to get the understanding of the examples that you have just done. Of course, if you have any challenges in handling any of the questions, feel free to drop a comment specifying the question that you need help in. And as usual, I'm always here to try and help where possible. So we've come to the end of our class today, but we need to discuss the quote of the day. The quote of the day stated that your journey will become much easier if you don't carry your past with you. So the quote is just encouraging us not to allow our past horrible experiences in life to affect our present peace of mind. Whatever happened, happened, and you cannot reverse it. So the best thing is to just pick the lessons from your past experiences and focus on building a new exciting future for yourself. And lastly, recall that the best way to predict your future is by doing your best today. Thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson. I do not take it for granted. In case you are new to the channel, kindly hit the subscription button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever I upload a new video, you will get notified. Until next time, this is Kai Intuition Academy. Thank you for the continued support. Thank you for the positive uh, comments. Thank you for subscribing. I really, really appreciate. Until next time, this is Kai Intuition Academy. Thank you very much.